Well, greetings to you, my dear friends in Christ and all who happen to find this video and press play today. Uh, welcome to our online worship service for this, the weekend of February, February 13th, 2022. My name is Pastor Peter Moore. I'm the pastor here at Emmanuel Lutheran Church in Centralia, Washington. And while we are on the downward part of the Omicron spike, we're still in the spike, and we have been watching the numbers very closely, and have um, uh, we are still postponing in-person activities for this weekend. So you uh, only get the message and the service online this weekend. We are very hopeful and optimistic that this might be our last online only that, that we're hoping by was it february 20th we're crossing our fingers that the numbers that are sliding down that we'll be back into kind of a more normal range where it's safe for us to resume uh, worshiping together in person so thank you for those of us that have uh, those of you who've been patient with us uh, as we're trying to do the right thing through this pandemic um, it has not been easy and uh, welcome to any of you that even if you've stumbled, it's your very first time finding one of our videos. We are uh, thrilled that you, ecstatic that you are here and that the message, uh, the good news of Jesus Christ is able to go forth in this medium on YouTube. We are grateful for that. I invite you to uh, bow your heads, close your eyes, and join me in a word of opening prayer. Oh, living God, be with us as we worship today. In your Son, Christ Jesus, you promised to make all things new. And so, Lord, we hand to you the poverty of our nature, that you might, too, transform that by the riches of your grace. And in the renewal of our lives, in the renewal of our hearts, make known, O Lord, your glory. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen.
reading today comes from the sixth chapter, the Gospel of Luke. We've been working our way through the Gospel of Luke this Epiphany season, and we'll continue to through uh, Lent and Easter and into Pentecost. It's, uh, uh, we're trying to do the whole year of Luke. Um, Luke 6, this is uh, uh, famously referred to as the Beatitudes or the Blessings, uh, which uh, I'm sure you've heard at one time or another. It's even kind of embedded in our culture. Uh, blessed are the poor, blessed are the meek, those who hunger, those who grieve. Uh, so the Beatitudes, Luke chapter 6, starting at verse 17. Jesus came down with them. He stood on a level place with a great crowd of his disciples, a great multitude of people from all Judea, Jerusalem, and the coast of Tyre and Sidon. They'd come to hear him, to be healed of their diseases, and those who were troubled with unclean spirits were cured. And all in the crowd were trying to just touch him, for power came out from him and healed all of them. Then Jesus looked up at his disciples and he said, Blessed are you who are poor, for yours is the kingdom of God. Blessed are you who are hungry now, for you will be filled. Blessed are you who weep now, for you will laugh. Blessed are you when people hate you, when they exclude you, revile you, defame you on account of the Son of Man, rejoice in that day. Leap for joy, for surely your reward is great in heaven, for that is what their ancestors did to the prophets. But woe to you who are rich, for you have received your consolation. Woe to you who are full now, for you will be hungry. Woe to you who are laughing now, for you will mourn and weep. And woe to you when all speak well of you, for that is what their ancestors did to the false prophets. The gospel of our Lord. Thanks be to God. So I hate this. I, I hate having to record all my sermons to a camera rather than seeing faces and, and uh, my beloved church folk. Uh, I hate not being able to worship in person. I hate not being able to celebrate communion. I hate worrying about COVID. I hate what this pandemic has done to us as a society, as a church, as individuals. I hate this. And I don't think I'm alone. If someone were to say to me, Blessed are you who suffer through this pandemic, for yours is the kingdom of God. I think I'd want to punch them in the head. I would at least guffaw, kind of disbelievingly laugh in their face. Who would ever be fool enough to call this blessed? Well, you know who? You know the answer, right, don't you? Jesus would. Who would be fool enough? Jesus. So Jesus is teaching the crowds when he utters these very famous words. Blessed are the poor, for yours is the kingdom of God. Now, that alone just sounds wrong, doesn't it? I, I've never heard anyone refer to poverty as a blessing. But Jesus isn't even finished. He goes on, blessed are you who are hungry now, for you will be filled. Blessed are you who weep now. For you will laugh. Blessed are you when people hate you, exclude you, revile you, defame you on account of the Son of Man. Rejoice, leap for joy, for surely your reward is great in heaven. It just sounds all wrong, doesn't it? No one who is hungry or poor or grieving or despised calls themselves blessed. So is Jesus just some sort of Pollyanna fool? Maybe he, he just doesn't really get it, you know, the, the way of the world and all. He, he's the son of God after all. Maybe he just doesn't really get us humans. You, you know what he needs to do? Hop on Facebook or Twitter for a while. That'll wise him up. I can think of several Facebook posts uh, that would tell you what people think of being blessed. Or, or my favorite, people's Christmas letters. We got a Christmas letter from a distant Friend, I don't want someone to actually stumble on this and think I'm talking about them. No, it's not you. <laughs> so we got, we got a Christmas letter from a distant friend. It told us how 
healthy their family had been, how great the kids were doing, all of their travel adventures, and now they're remodeling their house, and it went on and on, and then it uttered that infamous phrase, we're just so blessed. We're just so blessed. Of course, it never refers to suffering or woes, but always prosperity, good health, and vacations in the sun. I'm still waiting for the Christmas letter that says, well, we're all sick, the dog died, Bob lost his job, we got evicted, and we're living in our car. We're just so blessed. Right? It'll never happen, right? Because we associate blessing with prosperity, and it's usually material or physical or bodily prosperity. And it's been this way for a long time. The word that Jesus uses for blessing, it's fun, it's the Greek word markarios. Markarios are the poor, blessed. And that word has been used for a very long time. Way back in ancient Greek literature, blessing, or this Markarios, it only referred to the gods and to the realm of the divine, to heaven. Blessing belonged to heaven and therefore those living above and apart from the sufferings of the world. Now, it evolved to usage to refer to the dead, the blessed dead, who naturally were now in the realm of heaven and no longer suffering on earth. But still, notice, separating blessing for those above and apart from the hard realities of the world. Now, over time in classic Greek literature, no surprise, blessing began to refer to those who were wealthy, to the elite, to the powerful, whose way of life also allowed them to rise above the normal cares and the struggles of peons like you and me. So it should be no surprise to us at all that a word that was, refer that was used to refer to the gods is now being used to refer to the rich and powerful. I mean, just look at the way we treat our celebrities and the rich and the powerful today. Uh, the city of Rotterdam in Netherlands, for crying out loud, just dismantled a historic bridge to let Jeff Bezos' giant billionaire yacht through. So just the history of the word blessed alone associates blessing with those who prosper and are able to rise above the suffering and the dirty masses down here. And therefore, woes and curses for those who scrabble out their existence among the mud and sweat, right? That's the way of the world. And it's just the way it is. Until that fool Jesus showed up. Notice, Jesus turns everything on its head. He declares to the crowd, blessed are the poor. Never before has the word blessed been used to describe the poor. Let alone those starving, grieving, despised. Either Jesus got it all wrong and is indeed some sort of cosmic fool, or something profound and deeply revealing is happening here as Jesus ushers in the kingdom of God. Saint Francis of Assisi grew up the son of a wealthy cloth merchant in Italy. He had a conversion experience of sorts when he encountered a poor man begging for alms. Francis, as a young, rich, spoiled kid, rebuked the beggar, probably similar to what many of us would do today. Why don't you get a job? You're just going to use the money for booze, or my favorite, and this was uttered by a Christian man right here in Centralia, don't feed the stray dogs, or there will just be more of them. After Francis had thus despised and rebuked the poor, he was convicted by scripture where Jesus says, give to everyone who begs from you. Do not refuse anyone who wants to borrow money from you. And so Francis committed himself to a life of poverty. Once even bringing scraps of food that he had gathered while begging to a dinner where he was the guest of honor for Pope Gregory. <laughs> I, I, I love it. <laughs> You always need to have a good rabble rouser in the church. So concerning poverty, St. Francis wrote, quote, 
The treasure of blessed poverty is so very precious and divine that we're not even worthy to possess it in our vile bodies. For poverty is that heavenly virtue by which all earthly and transitory things are trodden underfoot, by which every obstacle is removed from the soul so that it may freely enter into union with the eternal Lord God. It is also the virtue which makes the soul, while still here on earth, converse with the angels in heaven. It is she, poverty, who accompanied Christ on the cross, was buried with Christ in the tomb, and with Christ was raised and ascended into heaven. For even in this life she gives to souls who love her the ability to fly to heaven, and she alone guards the armor of true humility and charity." End quote. St. Francis of Assisi. Poverty, Francis says, just like Jesus in our text today, poverty is a blessed treasure. Because, right, it removes the obstacles of the world that we might enter into union with God, connects us, did you hear, to the cross of Christ, to Christ in the tomb, and therefore Christ risen and ascended in heaven, and poverty is the teacher of true humility and generosity, and so blessed are the poor. Blessed are those who hunger, who grieve, who are despised, because in our suffering we are joined to Christ on the cross. Now, while this is indeed good news, it is also a hard word. I would never dream to tell a grieving widow who just lost her husband, rejoice, leap for joy. Your suffering has joined you to the blessings of our crucified Lord. Now, while not the most pastoral thing to say to a grieving widow, it is nonetheless true. Our joy is in Christ and him crucified. St. Paul announces this in 1 Corinthians, I have decided to know nothing among you but Christ and him crucified. Nothing. I've decided to know nothing but Christ crucified. And so the kingdom of God comes in Christ Jesus and is revealed as a topsy-turvy kingdom full of reversals and none so great as blessing for the poor as we are joined to our crucified Lord. Walt Pilgrim, New Testament professor at PLU and my godfather, wrote in his commentary on Luke, the norms and the values of society are turned upside down, promised blessings belong to the suffering poor, while the coming woes are pronounced upon the contented rich. And in his commentary, again, Justo Gonzalez says, for God's reign to be good news for the well-fed, for the rich, for the laughing, for the admired, they will have to wake up and change their ways. Ironically, while we share in our Christmas letters how blessed we are for some exotic cruise we got to take, wealth is the greatest prison from which we must be freed. We are in bondage to comfort. Contentment is our chains. And Jesus comes to set us free, free now to serve others, free to honor the poor and the despised. This is the way of Christ. Last week, our social justice team here at Emmanuel had a Zoom meeting with Pastor Cole Meckley of Gather Church to talk about homelessness, both its causes and solutions in Centralia and Lewis County. The conversation led us to the lack of affordable and low-income housing for those who are poor and struggling, especially the last few years as home values and rentals have skyrocketed. It's gotten really hard to find affordable housing. And then we began dreaming. What would it look like for churches to use their land or use their parking lots for tiny houses or small apartments or something to help address this desperate need? And then, of course, the next fear that we all shared was, what would the neighbors think? <laughs> That's an interesting question to ponder in light of Jesus' Beatitudes, though, isn't it? It led me to another question, which was, 
Is the church today willing to be hated, excluded, reviled, and defamed for the sake of the gospel? And that, I admit, is one of the hardest questions I've ever asked. My friends, the good news is that in your baptism you have been joined to Christ. Every time you confess, you are once more joined to Christ's crucifixion, his burial, and therefore his resurrection. You are a new creation set free from the bondage of wealth and comfort. However, that old sinner still clings to us like dead skin that we can't seem to shed. But Christ has given us new eyes with which to see the world around us, where it is not the flattery of the powerful or the donations of the rich that compel us, but rather the cries of the poor, the suffering of the widow, the laments of the despised, who draw us as only Christ can draw us, for indeed when you did it to the least of these, you did it to Christ. Amen. service concludes. Let us pray. Lord God, your spirit is poured out upon us in abundance. And so in boldness, we pray for your church, for the world and all that you have made. Blessed indeed, O Lord, are the poor. May your mercy, Lord, the blessings of your mercy come to all those who long for your consolation. For those struggling with poverty, with unemployment, homelessness, uncertainty, Lord, provide for all who are hungry, console those who face persecution, and grant peace to all who suffer. We ask your blessing on our food banks, 
those serving the homelessness, the Salvation Army, Gospel Mission, Lord, for uh, Pastor Cole and Gather Church, that, Lord, they would indeed be an extension of your kingdom and your upside-down values. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, help us as your church not to be led by doubt or fear, but strengthen us, O Lord, in our faith. And in trust, O Lord, may we profess your name and your reversal of blessings to the world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord God, those who trust in you, you say are like trees planted by streams of water. And so we pray, O Lord, for the trees and for the streams and the water, protect rainforests and land that has eroded, resurrect woodlands after forest fires. God of grace, renew this planet, and may we, O Lord, partner with you in its renewal. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, for those who govern, Lord, may you search their hearts and fill their hearts with humility. Lord, help them collaborate on policies that protect the people and the planet. And Lord, be with those who are truth tellers, those who challenge society to become more honest and more just. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Renew this congregation, Lord, and our shared mission as we plan and dream for the future. Inspire us, O Lord, by your word. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And Lord, for all who suffer, we pray. We remember our loved ones who are sick, who are hospitalized, who are dying, and who are grieving. We lift their names up before you, Lord, at this time. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, receive all these prayers, gather them into the great hope of your promises, O God. In confidence and faith we pray through Jesus Christ, our Savior, who taught us to pray, and so we join together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil, for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you. The Lord keep you. The Lord's face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor. And God give you peace in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. I'm
Oh, oh, oh.